Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, she's here. We have found her. And we're going to celebrate your new album. Let's do it. Planet Her. Uh, talk to me about this album cover, because there's a lot, like, you know, look, I, I'm a media guy. You're an art person. Yeah. You do a lot of art sh- that's fly, but I don't know what I'm looking at sometimes. So you're gonna have to walk me through it. This was from a series of different uh, sets that we uh-huh. did. This was shot by David LaChapelle. And he, legend. yeah, he's a legend. He's fantastic. He was really fun to work with. And we had done a couple different things and I was able to pick from each of those. This was the one I chose because this was the initial idea and I felt really set on that. I wanted to be kind of submerged in rock. And the thing is, this almost looks like I'm flying. Right. It, it, it kind of is left for your interpretation, but it, you know, I'm supposed to be like I fell from space and or whatever and landed somewhere and I was just sort of submerged in moon dust or something. I love it. So that dust was kind of planted like, her. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Well, um, 14 records, um, Young Thug, Ariana Grande, The Weeknd. J.I.D., SZA, which we've, you know, is a super smash. We might as well start with SZA, Kiss yeah. Me More. First of all, Kiss Me More, you, you wrote, this is your writing, you collaborated. Yes. Yeah. Is this inspired by Olivia Newton-John, Let's Get Physical? Yes, okay. absolutely. That's overt, yes. on purpose. absolutely. Okay. Um, I saw some comments where people were like, this unoriginal, you know, crap. Is Absolutely not. Stupid, but you know, like Absolutely a lot not. of stuff like that. And I was like, no, like I was in the studio, like, let's get physical. But the thing is, I was humming that, and I didn't realize I was humming that song. And then I was like, that sounds like this. And I went and asked everybody. They were like, yeah, that sounds like that. I was just like, Fuck it, let's go. Like, let me just put, you know, because I wanted to make a song about kissing, and then I, it just it happened, and yeah. I was like, I definitely can tell the sounds like that. And I, I loved that riff, so I was like, fuck it. The album opens up uh, Woman and Naked, two songs right. that embrace kind of the, the international African uh, Afro pop, they call it. Um, but, you know, to those of us that grew up in North America or in New York, it feels very Caribbean, mm-hmm. um, which is all the same thing. It comes from the continent. Um, Talk about why it was important for these two records to open up the album. I think woman in and of itself is a very like strong word. And it's also a very strong song off of the project. I felt like that needed to be there just because it had a a good message to it uh, compared to everything else. And yeah, it was one of my favorite verses I ever wrote. That second verse was I feel like one of my best uh, rap verses. And I just thought it was great to, to start it off with that. Just because it was also just like a positive message, like a positive vibe. Like I love, I love Afro, you know, Afro music. Like I just, I feel like it, it's natural for me just because my dad is from Africa. You know, like I, I feel like I channel something that I, I should have been channeling for a long time. So I, I just started it with that one. You're so new, you're fresh, you're young. Your father's South African. Um, We've actually, in other conversations, talked about you trying to find a moment to actually go to South Africa. Yeah. As we discussed earlier, figuring out who Doja Cat is, right? Growing up in a mixed world, you know, white mom, black dad, but then loving all different types of music. Who is the artist? Who is the band? Who is the, that really was like, I see myself in music. Like there might be a few bands and artists that helped you get there. I can only kind of like start from where I started. Like my mom got me uh, some albums when I was a kid and they were Rihanna, Amy Winehouse, Beyonce. Mom's got great taste. Black Eyed Peas. But she would listen to like D'Angelo and Jamiroquai and Lauren and Erica and like, All you the know, fire. just everything, everything like Fuji's and just everybody who I feel like is worth <laughs> listening to. So I would listen to a lot of that. When she would play like Busta and Lauren, I just, it sounds like more than music to me. It sounds like poetry. It sounds like, you know, it's entertaining to listen to. And I, I was always really inspired by that, but I never thought that I could ever make music because I didn't really have like a musical background. I know my brother listened to a lot of music and we loved music, but 
my mom wasn't really a singer. She would sing, but she wasn't a singer. And my dad was a dancer and I wanted to dance. So I took up dancing and I didn't really do music like that as a kid. I remember like when I was 16, I was just like, man, I'm like in my room all the time, like not doing anything. Like I don't have that many friends. Like I haven't been to school in a long time. I should be going to school. <laughs> when I wasn't in school, I was like on YouTube looking for like beats and stuff. And I was listening to a lot of instrumental artists. What grade is this? What, what time? This was in 10th or 11th grade. I think like so it was a tough time for you then? Yeah, it was really, it was really, really tough. Um, but I would just look up like instrumental artists and I would like download their stuff off YouTube. I'd like rip it off of YouTube and put it in the garage bin and like try my best. And I put like a blanket over my head and like made sure nobody else could hear me. And I kind of liked it. It was, probably wasn't good, but I liked doing it. And I liked how it came out, hearing myself and like learning about my voice was really interesting for me. So I just kept going. Like. I, I knew that I wanted to do it. And then from that to actually sharing it with someone or sharing it with friends. Right. And getting brave enough, right? Like what you're describing is a, a young lady who was unsure, was yeah. dealing with some like isolation stuff going on. Yeah. How did you get to, because I'm sure there's a young person watching this conversation right now who's a super fan of yours. Yeah. That is dealing with an identity thing, is trying to map their journey, is trying to find their tribe, right. is trying to find their voice. Right. Can you take us from that young lady to the young lady that got brave enough to share the music and start so, to get out there? Thank God for SoundCloud and having like mutual friends on Facebook and stuff like that. Like I found SoundCloud through my brother and I, I wanted to post stuff and I did. And people who were mutual friends of friends on Facebook heard my stuff and I was getting like maybe 50 plays on, on some of my stuff and I would like freak out or whatever. But, you know, knowing that people wanted to come back to listen to stuff, cause I was posting more. I had like a, like a system where I'd post like two songs a month and like no more, no less. And I just kept to that and it was doing well and it like kept on picking up and I was like, what the f like, this can't be that good, but I just kept going. And uh, yeah, like I had met some people through Facebook who were producers and they became really good friends of mine and like look out, looked out for me and everything. And I, yeah, would be in the studio every single day. Like I just went to their studio every day. They'd just drive me there. We'd spend the entire day till like 3 a.m. Uh, making music, so. That was insane for me because I just really didn't think anybody wanted to really hang out with me either. Like, I didn't have a lot of friends. So I right. was just like, why me? And then, yeah, it happened. When you look at that young lady, what would you tell her today? Like, what would you tell that, you know, 15-year-old, 16-year-old? Stop smoking weed. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I don't know if I'd tell her anything else. I'd be like... Yeah, don't eat bread and um, stop smoking weed. But everything else, she was... Everything else, like, I'm pretty happy that I did what I did, you know? I'm happy that I had the courage to put something out. Um, my brother, so I don't even know if I should be saying this. My brother is a producer, and he he's very good, and he can sing all of a sudden, which is amazing, and I hadn't heard him sing till like, a few months ago. And he, he doesn't really put things out. He just makes a lot of things. And then he's like, no, I don't want to put this out. Like, I don't want to, you know, he doesn't want to up, right. which I understand. But he makes like very good music and he's constantly producing and sampling all these beautiful, like refreshing things. And I'm like, why wouldn't you put it out? And like, I feel like, He's the, he's the opposite of me. He's not the oversharer, right. and I'm the oversharer. I don't even know where I was going with that, but that's kind of just my perspective on that. I Be don't brave know. enough to share your Yeah, like I'm put glad I was there. able to put that stuff out, right. you know? Some of the stuff I'm not proud of. There's stuff out that like should not be out and it's just because I couldn't sing and like I couldn't write. I was really just like putting whatever the first thing that came to my mind was. And, you know, 
people some people liked it there's really somebody for everybody there's some something for it you know what i mean let's get into uh the joint with you and ariana grande uh where you guys i think are likening um a man to drugs yes and i don't do drugs yes so it's a it's a again uh, <laughs> talk about reconnecting with ariana grande you guys have i mean now what you're on Three records together now at this point? The remix, this, or is it just the two? The remix and this one, yeah. Yeah, so just the two? Oh, no, three. Three, Motive right. and uh, 3435 and this one. Love. I love everything you guys have done together. What's that working relationship like? It's great. She's she's really, really sweet. She's um, extremely easy to work with, especially just in person. Like, all of it has just been super breezy for me, and a lot of the time it's very hard because artists will be artists, but she's very professional and uh, really funny, too. And like, fun, she's a like, shit talker. We have a similar sense of humor, which is was super, super uh, great to find out for me. On this album, Planet Her, on Ain't Sh is Ain't Sh clearly somebody broke your heart. Uh, or pissed you off in some kind of way. Yes. Uh, I don't do drugs. Addiction to some dude, whomever that is. Options. Mm -hmm. um, talking about, you know, you having, you know, celebrating kissing on Kiss Me More. How much of this is based on actual experience real life. versus other people's experiences? Girls, your girlfriends calling you, et cetera, et cetera. This is one of those albums where it, more of my personal life is in my lyrics. For the most part, it's more about the music. It's more about kind of not getting too much into myself and into me and more about what you're hearing and how you're processing it and how you apply it to yourself. So that's kind of always been me. Um, would you ever have a public relationship again? Um, no, <laughs> absolutely not. How are you going now? So you're becoming Hell like no. you are a, after this convo and people hear this album and the number of hits on this album, you are entering a zone where if we even get to sit down again after this, it'll be remarkable. You're, this is, it's about to, I mean, you're gonna. I, I, like, okay. So how are you going to navigate that? Yeah, so, <laughs> I don't know if I'm navigating right now, but um, I, you know, I can't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but you know, I just, I would just not share so much. And, and it, sometimes it comes with like dodging and ducking and sh not telling people stuff or lying a lot. Like, you know, I don't, I don't like to do that. And I would like to kind of have a public relationship. Just so you could be free and just be like but there's, everybody. There's cons with everything, yeah, every single, e either way. So I don't really know. Like, it depends who I'm with, too. Like, how they treat me and in public, you know, and how I treat them. And it just depends. Like, if I'm dating, say I'm, like, hooking up with somebody. That I'm not telling people about. But if I'm, like, getting married, like, I'm... I'm oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it becomes super real and no, there's tell, babies and... When it becomes real, yeah, I'll yeah, say yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But just the, like, dating and controversy yeah, stem from that. it's nobody's business. Let's get into you and J.I.D., yeah. Um, which, as a fan of hip hop and a fan of your rapping abilities and music making abilities, I, I when I got the album, I didn't know that was him on the record. I was like, yo, who is that? It sounds like, <laughs> I wasn't sure because I couldn't read the track listing. So when I saw the track listing, I mean, dope ass record. Yeah. Um, talk about how important, how important is hip hop to Doja? How important is making sure that the rap world knows you give a and take it seriously and talk about this clip. So this is, and I'm kind of going to go off course a little bit. I just re-watched an interview that I did with Sway where I was supposed to freestyle, and I just watched it about like an hour ago. He told me to freestyle, and I, I did, but it wasn't good. It was like the worst thing in the world, but it was on purpose because I didn't really feel like freestyling. Like okay. it just... I didn't feel like it. You know, I think that's kind of what people want you to do when you go on Sway, but... I I made a joke and I feel like people people didn't like that because they felt disrespected like no you when you go on sway you freestyle even at least do a, a written do something right. but I was like I'm not I'm just here to just be happy and just to have an interview and just do what I got to do but a lot of people value that a lot of people value like 
the culture, you know, being carried on and, and I didn't I didn't do that in that interview when I didn't freestyle. But I I care about rap, I do. And I feel like with Hot Pink, I put Smino on there because I know he is out of this world talented. Yep. Like I yeah, he just blows my mind and I uh, you know, putting J I D on this album was the same thing. I feel like these rappers need a a platform they need to be shown to the world more. And if I can do that, I'm gonna do that. And I love JID and I'm obsessed with Smino. Like I I feel like I could put more of them on there, but I wanted my album to kind of have not too many features and you know I chose Ariana Grande kind of carefully for that song particularly. So she you know JID just worked for this song. I actually had another song that he was on that I took off and I made him get on this one. So I just, you know, I, I just think it's important. I think it's important for different styles of rap to also be appreciated. Yeah, I, I think J.I.D. has his own unique way of doing it. Ski Mask, J.I.D., man, Smina, whatever. You you know what I mean. Yeah. Rappers who are unique in that right, sense, right, right. who aren't just kind of just rapping. You know, what, you know what I mean? Like kind of the triplet. Thing. Right, like right. I don't put a lot of that on my albums just because I I'm a lot more theatrical and I I think he's so capable of doing something that's like that. So you've arrived in this moment uh, with a lot of creative freedoms, you know, uh, dovetailing off that piece. Um, do you ever stop and smell the flowers? Like yo, I'm doing what the fuck I want to do right now. Yeah. I'm getting paid for it, and I can really I mean you could shave your head bald and. St start spitting like Tupac and everybody would be like, oh, Doja doing her thing. Like that, having that much latitude. Yeah. Do you get a chance to really process and enjoy that? Yeah, I do. I I get really tired. Like I'm constantly just exhausted, I feel like. But not really, like it depends on like what I'm doing, what I'm about to do. Like if I'm very excited about something, I'm going into it like head first and with a lot of energy and and, I feel like sometimes I do stuff that maybe I don't feel that excited about. And I, I, I try not to do that. I would say like I do that maybe five, six percent of the time of my career. But right now, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do what I want to do, I think, for the most part. And I, I want to like really develop myself and, and not regret anything. I think I, I have to think more about what I'm doing now. To be more like purposeful. Yeah, to be more purposeful. I think it's important. I I also like to say this a lot, but like Michael Jackson and Prince, you know, not doing a lot of collabs right. all the time. Right. They were not really, they almost had no collabs. So it's, it's kind of like you look at that and you're like, they were doing fantastic without anybody. And I like to, not compare myself. Definitely sounds like I'm doing that, but I, I'm not trying to. I just want. That's your bar. Yeah, like that's my bar. You know, like that's I wanna I wanna focus on what is best for me. And uh, at this time in this age, everybody is collabing. And what happens? That things sound like like mashups, like fan mashups. They'll put Nikki's verse on Kiss Me More with Meg on Kiss Me, or they'll put my verse on, on WAP or something or whatever. And I don't want it to feel like that anymore. I want it to feel like, I want things to be very special and very carefully done. So I'm trying not to do as many collabs uh, in the future. Uh, I think it's important. Dealing with your sexuality, expressing about your sexuality. You had a song on, I think it was on the last album, Bottom yeah. Where I was like, wait, she out here using pimp? This is pimp talk. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, hold up. What? Who is this person? The record was fire. The bars on the record are fire. I love the fact that it was very, you know, punk, hip hop infused. The video was great. Um, but I've always wanted to ask you about that song specifically. Uh, and what us as the listener, want, you wanted us to get from that song. Yeah, so that song, it's not me like... It's not literal. It's not that literal. So that actually, that is the laziest song that I've written. That's me. I think I was like lit while I wrote it. Usually I'm not drinking when I write. 
and I was drinking then, and I wanted to make something that fit with the sample. It's a Blink-182 sample. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, what if I merge punk and rap elements? So I put that on there, and it just came out that way. Um, but it's not about anybody in my life. It's not personal. It's just me, like... Talking sh Yeah, talking sh All the way to a record like Say So, which gives you very, like, you know... How do I... R&B, disco, pop, aesthetic. Right. Right? Super smash. But I feel like it also gave you a lane that... I, I don't know if you had made a record like that before right. Say So. Like, right. that opened no. up a new kind of sonic for you to play around right. in. Right. Did you anticipate that record being so big? And talk about that aesthetic that you were conveying in the visual, because I think that opened the door for Kiss Me. Right. Right? So I was really excited about that song because when I received the beat, I was like, this is not anything I would ever even really write on, but it was pretty to me. It sounded nice. And so I tried like a little humming on it or whatever. And it worked, and I fit some words into it. And I, I ended up really liking it, and I think I like that style because of my popping background, which we're not going to talk about. But, you know, I yeah, it just felt like there were hits in the song that just felt really like it you made could you dance pop to lock. it. Yeah, that made me want to pop lock, which we're not talking about. But, you know... Um, since we're not talking about that, we're going to talk about uh, Say So. But, um, yeah, I just... I I I really really liked the the beginning of it, just the whole producing, produce whatever the production, blah blah blah. So I added that on there, and it made it to where it made it. And I love the '70s. I feel like everybody loves the '70s, like it's coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's having its moment, and I was excited to do a video that was like that. And then I realized that I could make music like that, disco music. Mm -hmm. So then Kiss Me More kind of was birthed from that. Do you know how much people love you? Like, is that, have you, do you get it yet? Has it, has it like, yo, people really l love me. Like, they love my sense of humor. Hearing about the 15-year-old girl who was in her room on the internet and yeah. not going to school to this person yeah. has to bring some joy, right? Yeah, it does. I, I think people do. I think people enjoy, like, just I watched you brush your goofy teeth shit on IG Live for, for 45 minutes. Yeah, it was. I don't know if I spent the whole 45. It got. I felt <laughs> weird and I felt like a creepy old man. But I definitely was in there for a good 20. Like, yo, is this is this going somewhere or yeah. is this just dental care? Just brushing my teeth for five years on live. I really want. I don't know. I wanted to like talk about something and I opened it up to see if anybody would say anything interesting. So I just was brushing my teeth, reading it. Um, yeah. I have gingivitis. Really? Yes. So you have bad breath? No. Sometimes. I think like anybody else does at the so end of the day. So your morning breath like, whoa. It's crazy. It's, I think it's crazy. Yes. I like to like go like this when I talk to people in the Got morning. It. Well, at least you're conscious of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good God. I'm getting veneers soon. Why? Um, because my teeth, if I turn my head down like this. You can see one of my teeth overlap the Bro, other. Bro, come on, son. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I I am getting them fixed because in every picture I see it and I can't put out certain pictures that are really cute of me and that are that are sentimental. Don't f it up, man, and get because the of big chicle fucking oh, the, joints. Oh, you, you already know my teeth are not gonna look like this. They're gonna look like they're gonna be whatever shape makes you know sense with my face. The guy was very good at aesthetics and stuff, and he was like, we got to move these back. I'm getting 10 on each side, whatever. Or do we get to live it on IG Live, or is this going to be like boom and I don't before think and so. after? We don't get the in-between. I think there will be a before. I'll try to do like a TikTok or something All right. All where right. I show my, my teeth now, and then I'll show them after. I'll do a before and after TikTok. Well, and you're open to critique, so if everybody's like, nah, bro, that yeah. one tooth is too big. I'll cry. I'll, I will cry. I'll be very sad. Yes. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Keep it to yourself.